Right, so in August last year, an article appeared on Vice entitled The Top Greatest Landfill Indie Songs of All Time. Now, while I'm not exactly Vice's target audience, I was still drawn to it, not least by the disturbing piece of Doherty cartoon that's been lodged in mine, and now I'm assuming your minds too. The subheading was The Unofficial Ranking of the Best, Most Average Songs in British Music History, and from this point on, I was well and truly triggered. As someone who won in their late teens from the middle of a Venn diagram with not being called enough for rap music and being skinny, the other two circles, indie music became a massive part of my personality. While the other kids were shut upping or shut downing, I, the edgier and misunderstood kid, found solace in rough guitar chords, lyrics about being unhappy, but happy with that, and the idea of kicking back at the world, but the world kicking back a lot fucking harder. So when I read these bands that provided the soundtrack to my late teens being described as white boys with weak jawlines, I took that personally. Me and many of my closest friends are white boys with weak jawlines, and to have a sniff at them from whatever beanbag or coffee shop style office this was written from was only going to result in an angry, convoluted YouTube rant made over half a year on from the original article and probably only seen by around 20 people. The article goes on to compare indie to grime and other cultures such as New Raven Electro Clash, which Vice considered more exciting and influential than indie. My blood finally boiled with indie being summarised as a family caravan in August. Kind of shit, kind of a laugh, largely unremarkable. But both it's Zenith and Adir, it's drier eyes for couples who have fights at Tiger Tiger, scarf for men who drink bottled lager in polo shirts. It's an observational comedy about funerals, a viral video of a fight in a kebab shop, a wooden sign on the mantelpiece that says, today is the perfect day to start living your dreams. We have no choice but to embrace it, because it's always there, floundering between waves of nostalgia and indifference, the great British high street of chart music. Not to go full gammon, but seriously, if you don't like it, you know where the door is. Landfill Indie is Britain, and one of the best things about it. It's like an 80s sitcom. Naff, ages poorly, and loved by your dad. But this is what makes it great, not shit. What triggered me even more is they don't actually seem to know what Landfill Indie is, saying bands like Franz Ferdinand are too arty for Landfill, when they are exactly what I would say if I was asked the question, what band sums up the decline in indie music? Landfill, to me at least, means something you can get rid of with no loss to anyone. A flash in the pan record that doesn't go further than, that sounds good, whereas Vice seems to interpret it as any record that doesn't go well with their avocado and sourdough. People turn to indie not because it's amazing seminal art that will stand the test of time, they turn to it to quote one of the godfathers of the British indie scene, because the music that they constantly play says nothing to me about my life. I think the article summed up a generational problem, that you can only seem to enjoy something a bit naff or uncool if you're doing it ironically, or to laugh at it instead of just fully admitting to yourself that you're not as cool as you think you are and invest yourself thoroughly in the thing you've been made to feel embarrassed to enjoy for no reason. As I said before, indie music isn't Bowie or the Beatles and has never claimed to be anything different. It's about ordinary lads from your town getting to associate with major pop stars. It's the championship playoff final, not the European Cup. However, after I had calmed down a bit, I did a bit of self-reflection. Was indie music actually any good? Was it just the perfect blend of Adidas trainers and sexual frustration that led me to think it was? Maybe, just maybe, the professional music journalists know more than me, a man who until a couple of years ago would have described rap music as just talking over noise. So I decided to go over Vice's 50 landfill indie tracks and listen to them impartially. Are they actually good songs or can they only be enjoyed with a can of dark fruits and a face full of acne? So welcome everyone to Landfill or Land Brill. Apologies, I'm not funny or clever, it's the best I could come up with, I'm not very good at this. First on Vice List was Pete and the Pirates, Mr. Understanding, with a lyric about a taxi and a sound that could come from the soundtrack of any of the Naughties FIFA games, this is a great indie tune. On a casual listen, you don't really understand it, but you get the gist of what the song is trying to say, and also has a really good catchy hook. It's not a classic, but it's definitely more Lambril than Lambfill. Local Boy by the Rifles is a little Brexty, but still very indie. In particular the music video, it's got a pub, an old soldier and a mosh pit which leaves you in no doubt what this song is about. I'm not massively keen on this one, I'd probably even put it close to Landfill, but there's a bitter remark in the Vice article saying, the Rifles are arguably the finest example of Landfill bands fading into cultural obscurity while still doing better on paper than most of your favourite artists ever will. And this comment alone is enough for me to put it in Brill. 
I'm so I've been drinking of a cigarette, drinking of a cigarette, kiss that ask her name. Her boy doesn't seem right, feels a little funny, plus his sister kiss the same. I believe the technical term for a song like House Party at Boothies by Little Man Tate is fucking banger. Everything about this song and band is actually great. The dry sarcastic lyrics, the great guitar riffs and real northern attitude make Little Man Tate the band that everyone thinks the Arctic Monkeys are. And this oh to shitty but heavy house parties is their finest moment. They've actually made a comeback recently. They released a single called Boy in the Anorak which I actually again thought was pretty good. They're a very underrated band and if you haven't heard of them I'll definitely check them out. Welcome to Landfill. No, fuck you, Ryan Bassel. You're going in landfill, then I'm going round to Boothies for a good time. Next up, you've got Gilly Moti, Annie, Let's Not Wait. I'll just concede this one. It's very slow, it's boring, and there's no real identity. This one is landfill. Again, with less competence, how it all went wrong. This one doesn't do my defensive indie any favours. It's a bunch of indie cliches being shouted over guitar and some drums. Doesn't do anything for me. It's in landfill. Finishes and I think I could do better. So, 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 arrogant. Photos on the Wall by Good Shoes is so nearly a great indie record. There's some decent lyrics, good guitar, and the house party aesthetic of the music video really does it a lot of favours. However, it lacks that iconic, catchy chorus that makes or break any indie song. So I'm good for being harsh. I think it's another one on the landfill. Cajun Darts Party A Malaise is very similar to the previous few entries. It's a bit nothingy. It lacks personality and oomph that all great indie songs have. It's landfill. Shit, at this point I'm thinking Vice may have had a point. Someone running in the music video is always a great sign. I'm not sure why, but something about running in jeans and a jacket is quintessentially indie for me. That along with having a catchy hook as well as tapping into the common trope of indie music, or a protagonist simping hard for an unnamed girl edges it into Brill. Common indie, we've pulled one back. <laughs> Vice's Emma Garland actually answers this one for me. It's literally the theme song from the Inbetweeners. What more do you need to know? Nothing, Emma. It's a solid brill. I find this one a bit emo. Being discontent and stroke or unhappy is often a key ingredient in an indie track, but it needs to be balanced out with some optimism or at least having some pride in the dire situation the protagonist is in. I have to put this one in landfill, I'm afraid. This song touches on the incel element of indie. People who listen to this song don't have a girlfriend, but want one just so they can say, you know what kind of guy I was when they're a dickhead to him. The chorus lets this one down to, it's very bland, it's landfill. I'm a machine, chisel me down until I am clean I buy books, I never read And then I'll tell you some more about me There's lots of indie energy for this one but not much substance However, the article comments that Paul Smith's hat screams I'll corner you at the party and talk about why we shouldn't judge Morrissey for being a racist Which is something I've almost certainly done So for that, I'm going to have to put this one in Brill <laughs> No, just no, it's shit. Landfill, let's move on. This song, for want of a better word, is shit. However, the Vice article mentioned that the lead singer tried to sell a pair of Converse's to raise money for charity, but could only raise £52. This blend of delusion of grandeur, good meaning, and but ultimate failure is so good, I'm sticking it in Brill. I'm 
I'm using this as an opportunity to impose a zero tolerance policy on any piece of Doherty slander. Anything off the at times inaudible Baby Shambles debut album Down in Albion feels like indie heritage due to the context and the breakup of the Libertines and Pete and Carl's friendship. I can't put this in anything other than Brill. I really, really wish I could be Despite the black and white, the shots in the pub and the hair from the music video, there are, which are massive pluses for the track, it's just too bland for me to really get into. Landfill. Your dad cornered me in the hallway while you were in the loo. He gave me a white talking to, he said I was a terrorist. This track is great. It's a song about meeting parents and it going terribly wrong, which is in itself very indie. But if I'm just if you've not heard this song, just watch this clip and this will sum up why this is such a good track. In my notes for this one, I've just written shit, just shit. So I guess that answers that. It's landfill. I don't like Tudor. They're somewhat responsible for the epidemic of indie pop that Spotify thinks I like because I have the libertines in my library. The lyrics are boring and the video is way too HD for it to be indie. But that rift, that fucking rift, man, it's irresistible. That rift is, is the klaxon for chaos and indie night. So reluctantly, I'm going to have to take it out of landfill and move it to Brill. This track would not look entirely out of place as one of those comedy songs on horrible histories, but this is a good thing. As someone with an interest in history, any mention of the war gets massive points from me. Calming, clever and subtly moving, it's a brill from me. Sorry girls, that's our jeans, right up tight against their skin. Take you home to the dark and show you what's in. With glasses bigger than her face, she's off to get her once it wax. Find a gifty bag, she wants it from Harvey Nicks. Cause she's only thinking about number one again. This is so good. It's essentially a diss track on every indie boy's arch nemesis. A young, attractive, clever girl who isn't into scrawny guys. That along with a chorus that was clearly written with moshing in mind. This is a solid brill. What's that coming over the hill? Is it a monster? Is it a monster? What's that coming over the hill? Is it a monster? Is it a monster? What's that coming over the hill? Is it an indie banger? Obviously, this one is brilliant. Catchy, doesn't take itself seriously, and, and, and lends itself nicely to be turned into a football chant. It flies into Brill. A strong Scottish accent and the park football pitch do most of the work here. It's the Joker in the group opening up after one sombre pint too many. One of indie music's greatest strength is its relatability, and this greatly increases the emotional impact of many songs that are lyrically average, like this one. The fact a song like this that will no doubt strike a chord with so many people has been dismissed as landfill goes to show how out of touch Vice are with the topic they decided to write about. I've just had I hate this song and this band. Lyrics like, I'm moving to New York because I'm having problems with my sleep isn't anywhere near as clever as they think it is. Follow that right alongside, let's dance to Joy Division. However, if this comes on in an indie club, I'll, along with many others who hate this song, will love it. And that's why, unfortunately, it's Brill. This is for lovers. This is just classic Doherty. He's such an underrated songwriter and these sort of slow, less sort of rocky songs really bring out what great lyricist he is. 
I love it. It's brill. <laughs> Is this a parody? The band name alone makes you think this is some kind of piss take, and the aesthetic of the video is almost too indie. It's almost like Vice made this just to prove their point. It's a very average song. It's what people who wrote the article think is every indie song. It's so obviously landfill. Your Tesco basic Arctic Monkeys with a song which to me just screams football. It's not amazing, but it's such a staple of any 16 year old's away day playlist, it, I can't not put it in Brill. You have a face for the radio. Let's speed things up a bit because it's dragging and I'm getting bored. This is landfill. You are slipping and sliding right out of you. And there's absolutely nothing that you can do well. We live and die. We live and die in these towns. For me, this is the archetypal indie track. It absolutely nails it with the My Life is Shit, but I wouldn't have it any other way attitude. It's a homage to one club towns with a former Polytechnic University and a League One football team. It's a fuck you to London, and to use a phrase that I hate, the liberal elite. Made to be sung on your own, staggering home with a can of carling in your hand and a kebab stain in your jeans. The reason why Brexit happened is because organisations like Vice dismiss songs like this to landfill. It's a very, very solid brill. I like to wait to see how things turn out. If you apply some pressure, I like to wait and see how things turn out. If you apply some pressure. We come crashing back to landfill with this one though. Dull, bland and meaningless. Let's move on. She's got you high and you don't even know yet. She's got you high and you don't even know yet. The sun's in the sky, it's warming up your bare legs. And you can't deny you're looking for the sunset. I had this one down as a more simpy version of Woolly Bridge. I don't really know what I meant by that, but you know, let's just go with it. Anyway, it completely nails the robotic, autistic understanding of love and relationship indie boys have. I'll stick it in Brill. This feels like it could be on the soundtrack for any show on the Disney Channel. It's really not for me, I'm afraid. It's landfill. This has got a lot going for it. I think a girl living next door makes them twice as attractive to the more romantic indie lads regardless of what she looks like or her personality. Despite this, there's just not enough in it to move it out of landfill. Yes, this is good. 16 seconds in and you just know it's an indie classic. Catchy but an audible chorus polo shirts, soft sexism, and northern. Man needs this in Brill. Sorry, I, I'm not funny. I'm, I'm going to be quiet. Sometimes I go out by myself and I look across the water. Do I need to explain this one? It's obviously Brill. Kind of song that will pop into your head at the most unexpected moments, but you're always happy it does. Being able to tell people at house party that it's not only the original but better version of this song gives it plenty of plus points to get straight into Brill. Another band that led to indie pop. I don't mind the kooks if I'm being totally honest but this song really isn't it. It's Landfill. I noticed you You stood out like a sore thumb the most God, this one is bland, isn't it? Easy one, this. Landfill. The song to win any breakup. It's peak indie simp. Catchy, uncomplicated, but it doesn't need to be anything more than that. I'm a big fan of this one. Brill. But it's not what I heard If I follow the light that I deem the brightest I won't believe it It's always like this 
very nothingy. I've heard this song a few times and yet I can't remember a single lyric or even the tune. It's landfill. <laughs> This is just a classic. It's cheeky and laddie with a slight nod to sensitivity. It's the song equivalent of one of those blokes who tell girls they're actually a really sweet guy once you get to know him. You've got to put it in Brill, really. I knew all along that I was right at the start about the seeds of the weeds that grew in your hearts. I've forgotten part of the Libertine cinematic universe, but Dirty Pretty Things have their moments, and this song is one of them. Carl Barrett is a very capable songwriter, and this song, which is definitely not about Peter Doherty, showcases that. It's Libertine's connections and general catchiness pulls out of landfill. Inevitability of Audrinius is a classic indie trope and is definitely explored here. You don't want to end up in the 22 grand job, it won't be too bad, as so you might as well accept it. It's also got that slight sneer towards people who have done well, which is always helps. Solid track, it's in Brill. When I have Marty Boom, I've seen your frown and it's like looking down the barrel of a gun and it goes off. Yes, this is great. My favourite thing about this song is that I imagine the protagonist has just been a massive fucking dickhead to his girlfriend before he starts singing. I find it baffling though that Vice claim that Arctic Monkeys aren't a landfill band when they are embodiment of what appears to be their definition of landfill. Northern, rough, guitars, hard done by lyrics about their local area and of course a little bit shit when you concentrate on their music for too long. But anyway, Marty Bun is quite obviously in Brill. I like the outdated idea of the scenester. I imagine it is a less evolved version of the hipster, a group naturally hated by indie heads who are considerably less cool. The song itself isn't saying much though, so I'll leave it in landfill. In every single way, this is a brilliant indie tune, a love story between two ordinary people the idea that we will get old, or in this case, hit our twenties, eventually, and the sadness of letting go of our teens that ironically most indie kids probably hated. Great for a mosh pit too, it's easily brill. I'm the sick queen, I'm the wrong queen, I've got mascara running through a bloodstream, I'm on the hot step, I've got a broken heart, I wanna be a cherry liver liver cheap Few good lyrics in here I guess, the kind that you think are a genius on first listen but then get worse the more you hear them. I'm not really enough of a fan of this though, so this goes into landfill. And I know she knows that I'm not fond of asking. She will fall step by step. She still loves to get me. This is such an indie banger. It's a song for lads who don't admit they like One Direction, so need to find an acceptable alternative to listen to. You don't really know quite what the song is getting at but if a 16 year old had to make a film about an up and down relationship they'd use some parts of this as a soundtrack for the happy bits and other parts of the sad bits it's a solid brill well, you've got your friends and i've got mine don't go back to dawson and no don't go up the junction into our top three it's fair to say vice and nailed this one very boring, even with Johnny Burrell's Libertine's connections, I just can't justify not binning this one. It's landfill. Because I'm so clever, I'm so clever and wise, I'm fucked forever, if you don't mind. This song is why indie music is so great. This is not Doherty's finest lyrical work. There's no poetry in this song, but instead of pure, unadulterated two fingers up to whatever you want to stick two fingers up to. The lyrics are meaningless, yet simultaneously mean everything. Fuck forever could literally mean anything, yet you know exactly what he's getting at. This song's place on this list, for me, is everything wrong with the phrase indie landfill. While yes, it's not particularly clever or intellectual, or if you know about music, any good. But you can't just chuck away records like this, as to someone somewhere this song means everything. 
I'm sure I myself through the course of this video chucked away many tracks that other people would have played at their wedding, their funeral or as an anthem to their cultural revolution. People need to realise that you don't have to enjoy something shit ironically and if something that isn't cool or a perfect work of art speaks to you in some way you should embrace it and not just file it under look at this crap thing I used to like lol. I love indie music and this song is why. Fuck forever and fuck vice for this shitty article. The crown of Vice's ultimate landfill indie track goes to this darts event staple. Again, it's not a great song and it's also responsible for the rise of after goal music at football grounds, but you simply can't get rid of this one. It's too ingrained in British culture. Could you imagine a night out at a bar or a non-major sport event without this song? No, you can't. So therefore, it has to be brutal. So that concludes our journey through Landfill Indy, with the final score being Landfill 19, Lambril 31. That's a landslide. Conclusively proving that I know more about music than those at Vice. I hope you enjoy this defence of the fine art that is indie music. It's been, it's been a real effort to make, so if you please like and subscribe, that would be great. Also, if you could all boycott Vice as well, that would be really ideal. Anyway, I'll see you in a bit, everyone. Bye.